Good morning, church. Wow, it's not raining. The, um, what we're being drawn into on this week of our series is risk. Being a Christian involves risk. Giving yourself to Christ involves risk. Being creative involves risk. Someone may not think you're being creative. Who cares? <laughs> the, the fact that you're here involves some risk. And yet, with that risk comes great opportunity. Opportunity to listen and learn and sing, pray. We have to, we have to engage in that always, in the good times and the not so good times in the risk-free times and in the risky times. In the highlands and the valleys. Giving yourself to Christ involves risk. There'll be some places in this song where if you know it, please join in. If you don't know it, learn it along with us. Highlands, Song of Ascent. <clears throat> mountains were where you hide Oh how far I'd scale the valleys if you graced the other side Oh how long have I chased rivers from lowly seas to where they rise against the rush of grace descending from the source of its supply Cause in the highlands and the heartache You're neither more or less inclined I would search and stop at nothing You're just not that hard to find I will praise you on the mountain and I will praise you when the mountain's in my way. You're the summit where my feet are. So I will praise you in the valleys all the same. No less God within the shadows. No less faithful when the night leads me astray. You're the heaven where my heart is. In the highlands and the heartache all the same Whoa, whoa Oh, how far beneath your glory Does your kindness extend the path From where your feet rest on the sunrise to where you sweep the sinner's paths And oh, how fast would you come running If just to shadow me through the night Trace my steps through all my failure 
and walk me out the other side. For who could dare ascend that mountain, that valley hill called Calvary? But for the one I call Good Shepherd, who like a lamb was slain for me. I will praise you on the mountain. And I will praise you when the mountain's in my way. You're the summit where my feet are. So I will praise you in the valleys all the same. No less God within the shadows. No less faithful when the night leads me astray. You're the heaven where my heart is. In the highlands and the heartache all the same. Whoa, whoa. Whatever I walk through, wherever I am, your name can move mountains wherever I stand. And if ever I walk through the valley of death, I'll sing through the shadows my song. Sing with us. Whatever I walk through, wherever I am, your name can move mountains wherever I stand. And if ever I walk through the valley of death, I'll sing through the shadows my song of ascent. From the gravest of all valleys come the pastures we call grace. A mighty river flowing upwards from a deep but empty grave. I will praise you on the mountain. And I will praise you when the mountain's in my way. You're the summit where my feet are. So I will praise you in the valleys all the same. No less God within the shadows. No less faithful when the night leads me astray. You're the heaven where my heart is. In the highlands and the heartache all the same. But when we take that risk, no matter what, God will rescue us. Guarantee it. You are not hidden There's never been a moment You were forgotten You are not hopeless Though you have been broken Your innocence stolen I hear you whisper Underneath your breath will send out an army to find you in the middle of the darkest night it's true i will rescue you there is no distance that cannot be covered over and over you're not defenseless I'll be your shelter, I'll be your armor. I hear you whisper underneath your breath. I hear your SOS, your SOS. I will send out an army to find. 
Thank God that the God we serve is a God who will rescue us. Welcome to all of you to St. John's United Methodist Church. We're so glad that you're here. Whether you're joining us in the pews this morning or joining us online, thank you so much for taking the risk to come and be part of this celebration of God's day and this celebration of one another and the call to ministry that we all experience in so many different ways. And we give thanks to the God who is with us and who will rescue us when we go astray. Again, welcome to all of you. Turn to your neighbors, if you would, and say to one another, I'm so glad you took the risk to be here today. I'm so glad you took the risk to be here. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Just a couple of announcements to lift up as we begin our worship time together. A reminder that today... Um, our coffee hour is celebrating the life of Friedland Gross, and uh, that is provided to us by Tish Joyner Sims and her family. So we thank you uh, for coming and to share uh, for sharing your memories memories of Friedlandish. What a, a wonderful person and a good and faithful servant of God for so many years. Look forward to seeing you in coffee hour. Hope that you'll have the opportunity to do that. Also, a reminder that on Tuesday evening, we will hopefully, if it does not rain, be chilling in the park. And this is an opportunity for, uh, for study and growth, but also for fellowship. We decided it would be a good idea to get our church out into the community in Henry Law Park on Tuesday evenings. We're going to be talking about faith and important social issues. So this is, um, we're going to be using the, um, the words in the United Methodist Book of Discipline on the, um, yeah, our, our <laughs> So our social principles, yeah, I'm doing well this morning. This is great. We had a great start last week, even though it was torrential downpour and we had to come here to the church. Uh, 
but we look forward to a good Tuesday evening, whether we're in the park or we, we have to come back here. So please join us. That's from 6.30 to 7.30. And all are certainly welcome to attend. Bring a lawn chair and bring a, uh, a nice refreshing beverage and come and be a part of this gathering. With that said, friends, this is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it as we come together to worship our God. God's act of creating all that is, and of entering our lives in the person of Jesus, and of creating new life, all involves risk. To create is to assert ourselves in a risky way, because it involves stepping into the unknown and opens us up to criticism. But the parable of the talents reminds us that risk-taking may in fact multiply our gifts in the world. What risks are we willing to take to expand God's love and grace in the world. Let us pray together. Hovering God, you are as close as the air we walk through and breathe. Hope in us to stop and feel your presence this day so that we might learn what you would have us do in the midst of so much to do. Draw us into your quiet patience. Give us the courage to wait. Amen. Please stand if you are comfortable doing so and join in singing our hymn of praise, number 2130 in the black hymnal, The Summons. The words will also be on the screen.
Please be seated. <laughs> Today's scripture reading is from Matthew chapter 25, verses 24 through 30. Please let us listen for the word of our God. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter, so I was afraid. And I went and I hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave! You knew, did you, that I reap where I do not sow and gather where I do not scatter? Well, then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The word of God for the people of God.
two seeds lay side by side in the fertile spring soil. One of the seeds said to herself, I want to grow. I want to send my roots deep into the soil. I want to unfurl my tender buds and thrust my sprouts through the earth's crust to meet the sun. I want to feel the warmth of the sun on my face. And I want to open and blossom and bring joy to the world. The second seed said to herself, I am afraid. I don't want to send my roots deep because it's dark down there. And I don't know what lies beneath. And I don't want to send my sprout through the crust of the earth. Because what if I don't make it? Or what if I get trampled? I don't know what the sun feels like. But I've heard it burns. And I don't want to bud and flower. Some child might pick me. And so the seed lay dormant in the soil. A hen ro roaming in the yard was scratching at the soil. And lo and behold, she found a seed. And she ate it. Growth requires risk. Life requires risk. Following Jesus in the world involves risk. Remember that Jesus was criticized at every turn. That's not the way it's supposed to be. Who do you think you are anyway? We've never done it that way before. <laughs> the famous last words of the church. We've never done it that way before. But those who are willing to take a risk may in fact reap a great reward. We've never done it that way before until now. We've never done it that way before yet. Words of possibility, but words of risk to be sure. How many people here are risk takers? Raise your hand if you're a risk taker. 
Skip is waving both hands <laughs> and jumping up and down. Yep. <laughs> so roughly half of the people in the room are risk takers. How many aren't sure? Oh, there's a few, okay. So as a result, the remainder of us, and I'm including myself in this us, are not risk takers. We prefer the sure thing. We don't like feeling uncomfortable, right? It's easier to stay in the church where you've served for the past 10 years rather than take a risk and go to some place called St. John's nine miles down the street. <laughs> it's easier to maintain the status quo And frankly, it's easier to avoid even talking about the fact that we've never done it that way before. Jesus had a little something to say about risk-taking. Naomi shared with you the very end of what is known as the parable of the talents. And we in the English language have a tendency to automatically think about our own gifts and talents, right? Those God-given abilities and desires and, you know, those things that energize us that we are called to put into action. But in Jesus' day, that's not what a talent was. A talent was a unit of weight. Ancient Israelites utilized the Babylonian talent, which was the equivalent in today's world to 66 pounds. The Greek talent, which this could also relate to since the scriptures appeared to us in the language originally of Greek, was significantly more than 66 pounds. It was just over 200. Typically, a talent was a unit of, or a measure of weight, most often related to something of value. It might be gold, or silver, or some form of precious metal. And the assumption is that that was what was being referred to in this particular parable. But it was also a term that was used to describe an amount of cedar or frankincense or ivory, all of which had incredible value in the ancient world. But for the sake of argument, let's stick with gold or silver. A wealthy landowner was going away. And he left his stewards in charge, and he gave to each of them according to their ability. Now, ability, what? We don't know exactly for sure what exactly that meant. But can you imagine... 66 pounds of gold and what that might have been worth. To one, he gave 
Five talents. Five times 66. Anybody here quick with math? 330? Think about that. 330 pounds of gold. Swimming in gold. To the next he gave three talents. And to the last, he gave one talent. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't mind having 66 pounds of gold. Now think about what you would have done with that. So the first steward used the five talents and made five additional talents, including the five he already had. So when the master returned, he gave back ten. Well done, good and faithful servant. The third or the second, I'm sorry, the second who had the three talents did the same. Well done. Good job. But the one, knowing that the landowner was a harsh man, decided to do what I would have done Put that talent away. Let's make sure that nobody can touch that talent because this guy will have my head if anything happens to that talent because it's a lot of cash. Well, needless to say, the landowner wasn't pleased. Take that talent and give it to the one who made five. So now you have 11. And as for this worthless steward, throw him into the outer darkness. Don't you love that biblical phrase that comes next? Where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. The second seed said, I will just stay here in the ground. And when we stay in the ground, when we stay safe and secure and covered up, hidden away, we find that's where the darkness is anyway. As I was thinking about this parable and this message for this morning, it occurred to me, do you know what ostriches do when they get scared? They stick their head in the ground. For whatever reason, ostriches don't get the fact that 90% of them, of their bodies, are exposed to risk. But their head is safe and secure. And guess where they are? In the dark. And frankly, when you find yourself in the dark, you might as well be gnashing your teeth and weeping anyway.
I believe that God took great risk in the act of creation. Separating light from dark. Creating the waters and the land. Creating the night and the day. Creating the birds of the air, the mammals of the land, the fish in the sea. And God called it all good. But God wasn't satisfied with that. And I wonder what might go through God's mind and God thinks about what would have been if I had stopped there. But God created humankind. And to be honest with you, humankind hasn't got it right yet. But guess what? God still calls it good. In Jesus' day, humankind got it wrong, but that didn't stop God from creating more human, be human beings. And in the Middle Ages, humankind got it wrong, but that didn't stop God from creating more humans. And when World War I and World War II came along, humankind got it wrong. But that didn't stop God from creating more humans. And even in our day, more often than not, humankind still gets it wrong. But that doesn't stop God from creating more humans. God continues to take the risk because God knows what it will be like when humans get it right. You and I are called to take a risk. We're called to be the people of God. Risk takers. Not for ourselves, but for all of humankind which God has created and declared to be good. And if we who follow God in our lives put our heads in the sand, we will find that we have cast ourselves into the outer darkness. And there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. But that will not stop God from believing in humankind. And God will continue to create. The question, friends, 
is this. This God who continues to create, this God who continues to take risks, are we willing to be risk takers for God? Are we able to become co-creators of the kingdom of God? I believe that even I am willing to take that risk. I'm sharing this in the bellwether, but I'll give you a preview. Just don't tell anybody else. <laughs> Many of you know that I have been a high school football coach for over 30 years. This season, I will not be. To be absolutely honest with you, that decision broke my heart. And I'm not a risk taker. And I don't really know what lies in store. But I believe that God is calling me to something bigger than that. And guess what? I also believe that because God is calling me to something bigger than that, God is calling you to something bigger too. <laughs> While coaching has been an important part of my ministry and my life, and quite honestly, my sanity, <laughs> it's time to let go and let God do what God is going to do. Because I'm not satisfied with maintaining the status quo. Because if you look around, if St. John's maintains the status quo, the status quo will have us all in the dirt. Yes. And I believe that God needs St. John's. And I believe that Dover needs St. John's. And I believe that the Seacoast region needs St. John's. And I believe that the world needs St. John's. So I'm inviting you, my friends, whom I've known for a year, to take a risk with me to sacrifice with me so that God can do something big. May it be so. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of response can be found in the faith we sing, You Are Mine. The words will also be on screen. Please stand if you're comfortable doing so as we sing this hymn together. <laughs>
Please be seated. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God who takes risks. You lead us to take risks with you. To travel paths that we have not trod before. To travel paths that others say we would be wise to avoid. You call us, O God, to risk loving in a world that seems bound by division, distrust, even hate. And you call us to be creative and to become co-creators with you and bringing forth your kingdom here on earth just as it is in heaven. So take us as we are. You love us and you call us yours. And you tell us, do not be afraid. And so in this moment, oh God, we hear your voice. Calling our name. And asking, will you come and follow me? God, your summons echoes true. We seek only to be faithful. And we seek to spread your grace and goodness everywhere. Please, oh God, please do not let us lie dormant. Lift us from the darkness that so many times we would choose for ourselves. And enable us to serve you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. We bring our concerns before you, O oh God. Some of us are carrying heavy burdens. And we understand that sometimes taking the road less traveled is so much easier when we know that you have our backs and you have our burdens as well. And so with Linda, we pray for healing for nephew Jason. With Jim and Ruth, we pray for family safe travels back to North Carolina. giving thanks for wonderful experiences, even briefly. And know we have been blessed. 
with Bobby, we lift prayers this morning for healing for Anna Chick. Ask you to be with her, O oh God. And with Ron, we lift our prayers for Bob Willamy, who is in hospice care and nearing the end of his earthly life. Bless and comfort him and them. Lead Bob home in your love and grace. helping all to hold on to the promise of everlasting life in the world to come and abundant life here and now. And Lord, we also pray with Bobby prayers for successful surgery for daughter Jennifer. guide the hands of the physicians. Let your healing power already begin to flow. And be present throughout that surgery and that recovery time. We are also a people of great rejoicing, O oh God. We continue to celebrate 200 years of ministry here in Dover and beyond. We celebrate Annie's graduation and the opportunity that her family had to be together in celebrating that occasion. We celebrate opportunities for rest and recreation and vacation. We celebrate Friedlinda Gross's life. We remember her fondly and honor the many ministries that she was a part of. And there are, of course, other joys and concerns that we lift to you in the silence of our hearts, O oh God. Hear all these prayers we bring to you, for we bring them in Jesus' name, who risked everything for us. And together we pray the prayer that he has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Come and fill our hearts. There are so many ways for us to show our gratitude to God. For those of us here in the sanctuary this morning, I invite us to leave our offerings in the fish-shaped basket, which is located nearest the uh, AV table on your way out. For those who are joining us from home, I invite you to check out our website, stjohnsdover.org, 
and there you will find many ways to support our ministries in person or also through your giving through the link on our give page and by getting involved personally. This time I'd like to invite Gail Korth to come forward to share a moment for justice. Good morning. morning. This month, the Justice Seekers team is highlighting autism awareness. Over the past few weeks, Gail Phillips has written several excellent articles that have appeared in News and Notes, outlining how autism has been viewed historically. If you have not read them, I recommend that you go back and check them out. The message I am bringing you today is based on observations I made in my work as a speech-language pathologist in the public school system. Approximately one-third of my caseload during my tenure there consisted of middle school students on the autism spectrum. It is a fact that if you have met one person with autism, you have met just one person with autism. No two individuals have the same strengths, needs, feelings, and reactions as another. Next, and this fact is very important, the actions and reactions of a person on the autism spectrum are not any different than how we act and react. The intensity differs, but that is it. Take, for example, the rocking, which is a stereotypical movement. Don't we all love to relax and unwind in a rocking chair? As I said, the movement is no different, only the timing and intensity. Individuals with autism actually experience life with greater intensity than neurotypicals. For example, we all hear everything around us, but our brain filters out the important information. But if we hear our name mentioned on the other side of the room, our attention immediately shifts focus. The term for this is the cocktail party effect. Now imagine not having that filter, but having all sounds be equally important. Visual stimulation is the same. The flapping movements characteristic of autism are considered to be a way to eliminate extraneous information, kind of like what we do. On the screen is, oops, on the screen, is a painting by an artist with autism named Trent Altman. It is titled, The Breath of God. Can you imagine being able to sense in that way? His artwork is amazing, and I recommend that you check it out. I will put the link to his studio in next week's news and notes. My sessions with my students were always interesting. I taught social communication, eye contact, active listening, tone of voice, body language, including how close to stand to another person. In one instance, one of my students was selected to have a major role in the class play. The music drama teacher came to me and asked me to teach him to stand in a normal way. Another student was so afraid of thunderstorms that he would not leave the building to get on the bus on cloudy days. We had many lessons on clouds. Um, I had lunch groups in which my students could bring a friend to my room for lunch. At the end of lunch, we would play Pictionary. One of my students stumped us all with a drawing that looked like the one on the screen. The word that he got 
was cup. When I asked him why he didn't draw a coffee cup, he looked at me astonished. It had not occurred to him to draw the coffee cup. Just different, not wrong. My students would often ask me why some people picked on them or avoided them. My response was an analogy of a house. If you walk into a clean house, no one notices, because that is what we expect to see. But if we walk into a messy house, we notice it, because we did not expect to see the dirty dishes, the clothes on the floor, and so forth. When they act in an unexpected way, people notice. So I had to teach them not to be the last person out of the room when classes change, and not to react when the bully bothered them in class. The bullies, and there are still some, were smart enough not to get caught. They waited until the teacher's back was turned and poked or pushed my students. That disturbance would make the teacher turn around and catch my students' reaction. And guess who got spoken to? I learned, most important, what is really needed is for us to educate each other. We need to see that individuals on the autism spectrum are really like each of us and deserve respect and acceptance. We are the ones who need to learn and change our attitude. On the screen behind me, you'll find a small list of individuals throughout history who were known to or believed to be on the autism spectrum. Consider their gifts to our world and those still to come. Thank you. And now, if you'll please stand, if you are able and comfortable doing so, and join in singing our closing hymn, Living Spirit, Holy Fire. It is not in any book, so you are beholden to the screens. And now, friends, may you see the unfolding of each day as an opportunity to be a co-creator with God. As a Jesus follower, may you feel his company leading you toward creating more kindness, justice, and mercy. May you know the nudge of the creative spirit within, making belief in all you are, and all you do. 
and may you go forth and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.